Hey Glam Fam, welcome to today's video. So we're gonna keep this video very short and simple this week. I have been off the last week and a half, so I haven't been able to film, but I did quickly film this brand new shade that I picked up from the Tear Tear Cushion Foundation. You guys, I am obsessed with this little viral egg. So I have a full review on this video. You can check it out. I'm not gonna go over all of the details. You can click on that card right there and it will take you to my full in-depth review. But this week, I just wanna show you guys that this applies so beautifully with my new technique. I absolutely love it. I'm obsessed with it. I did pick up a couple other darker shades and I'm going to show you guys why I don't personally think this is a good product for contouring or bronzing. So we'll touch on all of that in just a second. If you're new here, I'm Christy. I'd love for you to hit that like button, subscribe button, and without further ado, let's get glowing. Put a bounce on the dance floor. All right, Glam Fam, let's jump right into it. So Tear Tear now has 30 shades available on Amazon and Stylevana, I wanna say, and Yes Style, but it's hit or miss on Amazon. I personally like to buy it on Amazon for me. I just like to wait for the coupons and it's just easier if the shade doesn't work out to return it. But they do have this shade finder filter on TikTok if you guys wanna check that out as well. I'll leave the details in the description box and you can follow me at Christy Allure on TikTok. So I did purchase this myself. You guys, this is not a sponsored video. They didn't send me anything, but I do really like this new shade that I picked up. And this is shade 24 and it is a soft beige. This was the shade I really wanted and it wasn't available on Amazon until recently. So I'm really excited I was able to try it out. I don't really particularly like to go to Yes Style and all those brands unless I know I like the shade because Amazon's just a lot easier to return. Plus I find that you get Get better deals on Amazon. But that 24 soft beige is literally my perfect shade. Just make sure you guys keep that lid nice and tight with all cushion foundations. But you can see that shade on my hand right there. And I like to pat it in there before I go onto the skin and you guys can see it just really just even blurs things out on my uh, hand right there. And I don't feel like this one oxidized as much as the 21W for some reason. This one stayed pretty good color and I hear that with some of the shades. So it's hit or miss, you're just gonna have to try it on. So I did start out with my Dermatology Water Cream. This is my best priming method, do what works for you, but you can always use my code Christy20 with all dermatology products, but it just leaves the best canvas for my makeup. And then I went in with my NYX, you guys know the frizzy face, it's affordable, it's amazing, and I just literally can't do a makeup look without this combination. And I just love the way that one just makes my skin feel cool, like especially during the summer, but it's not gonna give you that silicone feel. I personally like the silicone feel, so I go in with my Dermatology number one primer. Again, do what works for you, but this method has worked amazing with all of my foundations that I love, especially this one. Then I went in with my MAC, and you guys know I'm obsessed with this strobe skin tint, and this is light one. And I like to do this for that little extra radiance underneath. And the look I have on currently, and this look I did that, I did the MAC Skin Tint. I'm just using the MAC 170 brush, I think it's called. Then I went in with the 24W. I really like going in there, dipping that into the cushion foundation, and then going off the back of my hand and really getting off a majority, because there's so much on that little sponge thing, but getting off a majority of it onto my hand, and I can always go back and dip in my hand for more. But as you can see, that applies it a lot less aggressive than when I first applied it in the first video, which was more of a first impression video and I'm just getting to know the product and I really kind of want it to go heavy on that first round. But this, I like much, much better, just going off the back of my hand and then just really kind of taking it onto the skin. But I still love my Dose of Color sponge. So as you'll see right there, I'm going in with my Dose of Colors sponge and it, again, going off the back of my hand to get off a majority of that product, I still like it with the Dose of Color sponge or just any sponge. Just for me, cushion foundations apply the best. My Armani one always applied amazing with the sponge. And it just allows for you to kind of soak in some of that product so you don't have such 
a layer, a heavy layer on your face. But I did go in with the MAC 170 brush, or I can't remember the number, and I just, again, go off the back of my hand so I could take off a majority of that product. And I just go into those little areas where I have sun damage and sunspots. But for the most part, my skin is pretty clear. This has been amazing on my skin. I don't think it gives my skin the justice that the Maybelline does. I feel like I get more benefits out of the Maybelline because it has the vitamin C in it, but this leaves this such a beautiful glass to the skin with a lot of coverage, especially if you really are going somewhere nice. It really does. You could just see how beautiful that looks on my skin. I just really love it. And then I went in with shade 40N Cinnamon. I tried 43N and that was way too aggressive. Then I went with 40N and this still is just a very, very dark color. And because there's so much pigment in these cushion foundations, you just have to be very, very mindful of that where it can look very muddy on the skin, especially if it's too dark for you. And this one, again, was, even though 43N was way out of control, this was still pretty aggressive on my light to light medium during the summertime I've been self tanning. Uh, skin tone, I just felt like, I don't know, it just looked prettier uh, on the swatch than it did on the skin. For some reason, when I put it on my skin, it just, applied way, way more pigment to, as you can see on my finger, I'm like, okay, this could work. And then you can see the swatches right there. It's so aggressive. And even though just patting it on the back of my hand and onto my face, it still is just too aggressive. And I'll kind of talk about that in the outdoor wear test. So I don't want to repeat myself, but you can see right there. It's pretty if you just get a little bit of an amount of it, but I would just much rather use my contour. But I did want to show you guys just in case any of you were interested in, and you were twinsy to me in picking this up. So I'm going to try to apply that to my cheekbone, but watch that. Oh, I mean, you will even see on my face right there. It's, it's very aggressive. And then it became more aggressive on that side because that was the original side and I just took the remainder on the other side. But you'll see, I'm gonna go back into 24W on to that pad and I'm just gonna kind of touch it up there and you'll see it starts to diminish and you might think it doesn't look bad. I think personally it was just way too aggressive and obviously on that side because that was the initial side. But it just wasn't for me. I would much, 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 much rather use my own contour product because I love my Rare Beauty Stick and I love my Armani. I just, and my Tom Ford, they just work out better for me. But I'm just kind of going over it with that MAC brush. No excess product on that brush, just so you guys know. That's just whatever was the remainder on that brush. But it structured out my face. I just didn't think it was that amazing. And then I went in with my Hourglass Concealer. I do not like this tier tier as a concealer. For me personally, it's just too thick. Concealers tend to just have more look, I like the liquid concealers because they just blend better and they just look more healthy on the skin. In my personal opinion, I will not use this one as a concealer. I've tried it with the 21W mixed with the 24W and it was way too cakey. And it just really accentuated my lines and I don't have anything there to counteract it. So you really could see it and I just didn't care for that. So that looks nice and healthy. It's just not my thing with the darker, um, with the darker one. I don't know. I just liked it better with just the 24W. So let's roll into what it, that looked like outside so you guys can see. And you, I just, I see it. It looks muddy on me. I, do, I it just didn't care for it. It looks pretty, but I just did not care for it. And that is a Natasha Denona Golden Collection look that I created, not on camera, just for, I just was just playing with the palette just so you guys know. But it is really pretty. I love the way 24W, again, I don't think it oxidized and it looked really, really pretty outside. Now I wanna show you guys how I applied it in today's look. I don't know, for some reason with this L'Oreal uh, right here, this Lumi Glow, it applies so beautifully. So I thought I'd just throw this in here. It was gonna be for a short, but I decided just to throw it in here. I will probably release this as a short as well. And then I took the L'Oreal Gloomy Lotion in Light. That's my favorite shade, but I also have medium, but light is my favorite. Then I went in with the Tear Tear Cushion Foundation again, just starting out. I like to start out with the sponge that it originally comes with, place that pigment in, 
And then I go in with my Dose of Colors sponge to blend it all out. And for some reason, it just looks so beautiful. Just that glow you get is just incredible. And then I went in with the Rare Beauty Contour Stick. And let me show you guys the difference between that than applying the 40N with the Tear Tear Cushion Foundation. I just think it just looks smoother, just more realistic, more natural, not cakey. For me, I just don't think you should be putting foundation over foundation. And that's what I was doing with the Tear Tear. I think contour should be left for contour products unless something's really thin, like the Maybelline skin tint is really thin, so I don't mind using a darker shade to bronze up the skin because it's so thin. This is so thick and has so much pigment to it, it's better just to use it as a foundation, in my personal opinion, and then using your own contour product to contour up the skin. And I just think it just looked healthier and more beautiful, and it just looked so gorgeous outside, you guys. So I am gonna roll over and finish this video Video off there but I do want to quickly show you guys this is where this falls on my foundation rankings list now I am so surprised but I am putting this as number two as a close 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 to my Maybelline just because of the price point I'm putting it above the Surratt but I still love my Surratt, so don't get me wrong. It's almost tied with Surratt, but because this has a cheaper price point, I'm putting it a little bit higher, especially for the quality you get, you guys. It's pretty darn impeccable for that price point, especially when you can get a good deal on Amazon. So definitely check that out. Check out my review on this product so you can get the full review of this. And I will see you guys next week with the full review this eyeshadow look plus i'm about to take this off and do a, a more glamorous look with this palette and then show you guys what this looks like as a highlighter so we are going to go over all that next sunday stay tuned make sure you hit that like button the subscribe button and the bell so you can keep your notification bell on and i will see you guys on the outdoor check-in and i will also see you guys next week love you guys bye all right, Glenn fam, so I wanted to do an outdoor check-in and show you guys what this foundation is looking like six hours into wearing this. It's hot. I'm sweating. I had to turn off the air so you wouldn't hear that while I was filming, and it's really, really hot, but you can just see this foundation, as I mentioned in the first review, where it's even more beautiful throughout the rest of the day, and not many foundations you can say that. Obviously, it's still settling into my lines a little bit, but that's going to do that. I'm over 46. We are where we are. I don't particularly like the darker shades for contour. I prefer the way I applied it today with the Rare Beauty contour stick and just whatever contour you have. You don't need an extra red cushion compact to travel with. I don't think it looks, I think it's a little too much. I like contours to be a little bit softer and not so aggressive like with foundations. The only reason why I like the Maybelline skin tint is because it is so lightweight so the darker shade works out where it doesn't look muddy or cakey. Where I feel like this one could look cakey because you're putting foundation over foundation. So that's for me, that's just my personal opinion and personal preferences. I just like the actual foundation and then just whatever contour product. And I actually don't really care for it as concealer either. I really just like it as a foundation and just wear whatever concealer. I'm wearing a uh, Charlotte Tilbury mixed with a teensy bit of hourglass today and I really like it. So I will have everything down in the description box. I do have the Natasha Denona Golden. I'm going to do this eyeshadow look for you guys soon. Just a very natural, literally like less than five minute eyeshadow look so you will see that alongside a more glamorous one when I do that video but I did want to show you guys how this is looking on an all day, almost all day wear test. I've worn this for nine, 10 hours and this just wears so pretty. I really love 24W. It really does look so pretty outside. So I wanted to show you guys that. I'm going to end the video here and I will see you on the next one. Love you guys. Bye. Sometimes I'm like a whisperer